This training video will teach you how to utilize CHS's proprietary FTP automation software. The purpose of this software is to simply automate file transfers between a PC and a remote server. The remote server setup is not covered in this video. This video assumes that you already have an FTP server and that you have obtained the necessary credentials to access that server. An example of where this software might be used is with a hosted client that utilizes Zetafax. Zetafax will be installed on the client's PC and it will store incoming faxes on the C drive of that PC. The client will need those files to be available on their hosted server where they can then import them into LiTeX MD. To accomplish this manually, we would have to access the local directory on the local PC where the Zetafax files are stored. As you can see, here we have them in C Zetafax. Next, we'll have to log into our FTP server. This we will accomplish with Internet Explorer. We can now manually copy files from our local directory and paste them to our hosted FTP directory on the right. This process is manual and can become tedious. To automate this process, we're going to utilize the new CHS FTP automation software. To install the FTP automation software, you can browse to our FTP server or SugarSync and you'll find the files under FTP, CHS FTP, IT, and we have an FTP folder. In here you have different utilities to automate FTP setup. We're going to be using the CHS FTP automation setup version 12. Simply run this installer, leaving all settings as default. Once installed, you'll have the following icon on your desktop that you can use to access the program. The first time you launch the program, if there are any updates that have been released since the initial release of the installation file, those updates will automatically install. Just click Yes. Once it's installed and running, the FTP automation software with the same icon will appear in your task tray. To access the program, simply right-click the icon from the task tray and click on Open. In the first window that appears, you'll see both your local file, direct file directory as well as your FTP file directory on the right. In this case, there is nothing connected, so there is no files on the right. To set up a new connection, we're going to click on FTP server setting in the toolbar. We click on new down below, and on the right here, we can simply fill out our FTP server information. The server name is simply a description of the purpose for this FTP, so we're going to call this training video. The host is the host of the FTP server. As mentioned before, the, this video assumes that you already have an FTP server, that you've spoke with the, with the client or the IT person to get this information. In this training video, we're going to be using our local server here in the office. Once you've put in your information, you can click Test Connection to verify that the information is accurate. If you get a success, then you can continue. Just click on OK. And now you're ready to set up your scheduled, your scheduled task. Click on Scheduler List, then click New. In the name, this is the name of the task. Again, we will call this Training Video. The description can be a little bit more descriptive, so in this case we want to set up, uh, we want to identify that we're setting up a Zetafax transfer. The next field, when we click here, we're going to get a list of all of the FTP servers that we would have set up under the FTP server setting. We're going to select the training video connection. The next window is my FTP directory. This is going to list the directory on the FTP server that we made available here under the training video FTP server. 
these are all of the files that are available on the remote computer. So I'm going to select CHSFTP and let's just say internal. Now anything that I set to upload is going to upload to this directory. Next we're going to pick my PC directory. Where locally do I want to store files? If you remember earlier we said it was going to be Z ZetaFax. Now my next field is the type. Am I uploading or downloading? This means am I uploading files to this directory from this directory or am I downloading files to my PC here from this directory? In this case we want the files that are received from Zetafax to be uploaded to our FTP directory so we're going to click on upload. Next we have a few options. Do we want to delete the original file after it's done transferring? If we don't do this, it's going to continue to transfer this file every single time the task runs, so this is generally the option that you do want to select. Next, if the file already exists on the server, do we want to replace the file, ignore the file, or add timestamps to the name and just transfer it again? Most solutions like Zetafax or scanning solutions are going to uniquely name the file that's created, so you shouldn't have to worry about this. However, to be safe, the best option to select here is to add a timestamp to the name. Next, we can put in a filter for file types. Zetafax and many scanning options will typically only scan or only save PDF files so that we can eliminate any errant files from transferring to the server. We can put in a filter here and say .pdf. This will allow only PDFs stored in the Zetafax directory to be uploaded to the FTP directory. Next, we're going to go to the Triggers tab, and we're going to tell the system how often we want this to run. It's going to periodically scan the Zetafax directory to upload new files. Daily is generally a good option, starting it at the beginning of the day, so say 8 o'clock a.m. unless they open earlier. Every one day is fine, but then we want to repeat the task every five minutes, or you can do ten minutes depending on the type of files that you have transferring. If you feel that the task will run longer than five minutes when it runs, then you do want to go with a longer period so that the task does not run into itself. Once done, you can click on Save. And now the task is set to run. You can close out of FTP Getter, and F FTP Automation will continue to run in the task tray. In order for your scheduled tasks to run, the application needs to be running. Please be sure that a user is logged into Windows at all times that a transfer needs to happen, and be sure to add a shortcut to the application in your Windows Startup folder. In addition, by right-clicking the Task Tray icon, you can open the full application, force the tasks to run outside of their scheduled times, or exit the application.